I read an article just a couple days ago, and it was not in a tech mag, it was in The Economist. So it, they were talking about the rise of the Python programming language and how it's getting huge, it's growing very quickly. And the reason it's growing very quickly, and if you watch my vlogs, you know the answer to this, but I'm gonna you know, repeat here. The reason it's growing very quickly is because it's a very flexible language. You see Python used a lot in AI, it's used in data sciences, it can be used to build web apps. It's uh, very, very, very flexible in that regard. Another reason why it's very popular is because it's used a lot in the schools and it's used as a teaching language. A lot of, I have colleges and a lot of schools who use my Python course to teach uh, Python to the students. And it's just a great way to introduce students to programming because the syntax, the code, the Python code that you actually write, is actually quite uh, readable. It looks more like English than just about any other language I've seen out there, at least the recent languages. I've used languages like 15 years ago that were pretty Python-esque in terms of the syntax, in terms of the code. But anyway, so Python today, though it's a sophisticated language and it can do sophisticated things, it has an easy to read syntax. Syntax is just a nerd word for code, the code that you write. So that's the main reasons why Python is growing so fast. Despite the fact that Python code actually runs quite slow compared to other languages, like Swift will run circles around Python when you actually process and run the code. So for example, if you're using Swift as an example to process a million records from a database, the Swift will be able to do it much more quickly than Python could. You know, Python will take much, much, much longer just because it's a slower to run language. But in many situations, that uh, Python speed at runtime when it's running, runtime equals when it's running, is not that important really because computers are so fast these days. You gotta see, the older languages like um, C++, C, and several others, they had to be super efficient in terms of runtime when they ran. They had to be super efficient because computers are just far, far weaker, smaller, you know, less powerful CPUs, much less RAM, slower RAM, slower disk space. But that has changed. Like computers are just getting so bloody powerful these days that languages like Python that don't run nearly as quick as C++ or C, uh, they're still very, 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 now they're very, very effective because, um, okay, so you, you write, you write a little program in C++, so it will take you three weeks to write in C++, and it will process a million records in a minute, and you write the same type of program in Python, and now you can write it in Python in, in you know, two, three hours. Yeah, it doesn't process the million records not in, you know, uh, five, ten minutes, it takes an hour, but of course, it only took you a few hours to write the program to begin with in Python. So that's why people use Python. Python is also, I should I mention this, used a lot just to automate server processes. I have a friend of mine who works at a very large animation studio here. And all he does is write Python code. He doesn't write Python apps or programs. He writes Python scripts that automate, I think it's a, it's a Maya engine. It's a Maya program used to uh, create 3D animations and so on. And they also use it in their render farm to control all the rendering machines to process all the video. So it's, it's a tremendous amount of jobs in Python. In fact, he was telling me he has a hard time finding Python scripters. This guy's who write Python scripts. And it's, um, it was interesting, when you're, being, when you're a Python scripter or server, when you're doing server automation, it, it doesn't require you to be a super sophisticated coder in a way that if you're writing a, a, an app, a web app from scratch, which had to, you know, maybe a dating site or something. That would require more sophisticated code because architecturally you have much more to do there versus writing just a bunch of scripts to uh, automate a, um, a rendering farm. But nonetheless, uh, there's a huge demand for these people. They can't hire them. They can't find them. And so that's uh, yet another reason to learn Python. Now, I'm not saying you should learn Python and not learn any other language. As you guys know, if you've been watching my vlogs, you know I'm a big advocate of uh, learning several languages because with every new programming language that you learn, you're going to become a better programmer, a better coder overall. So in my personal career, I've written software eight, eight or nine languages. I've lost count now. And uh, every time I will learn a new language, again, my abilities as a programmer would just get better. So let's say you started learning Python, then you did some JavaScript, then you went into some uh, 
maybe PHP because you want to do some freelance work, and then you did C Sharp. Every time you got a little bit better, or excuse me, every time you learned a new language, your knowledge of the previous language would be better. So you learn Python first and JavaScript. When you learn JavaScript, your knowledge of Python will get better by having learned JavaScript. Because what you'll see as you learn the program, all these languages share many similar principles and concepts. They just do it in a slightly different way. Yes, sometimes languages will have certain capabilities, others don't, but it's very specialized. But anyway, you can't lose by learning a programming language. So I'll leave with this. If you're one of these persons, if you're somebody who's kind of worried that you're gonna learn the wrong language, it's almost impossible to, for that to happen because the skills that you pick up, let's say learning Python, let's say for some reason you find in your, where you live, you can't find Python work or you maybe don't want to do Python. It's not a waste of time. You have not wasted a minute learning Python, even if you never use it in real jobs because all those Python skills and that Python knowledge will, will, will be able to transfer over like this into C Sharp, JavaScript, PHP, C++, Java, Ruby, etc., 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 etc. You get the idea. Swift, you don't lose when you're learning to program, even if you don't end up using that language. So never think that you're wasting your time ever learning a programming language or learning a framework or learning a library. It's almost impossible because anything that you learn in one language, one framework, one library is almost 100% transferable, that knowledge, into others. All right, that's it for now. Ciao, ciao.